Hi. Today I'm going to tell you about a 2017 romantic fantasy film called The Shape of Water. You cannot under any circumstance kill this creature. Every morning Eliza goes the same way, after turning off the alarm clock the girl gets out of bed, takes a bath, boils eggs for breakfast and after visiting her elderly neighbor Giles goes to work. Eliza works as a cleaner in a secret laboratory, where she got without much difficulty, since the girl is mute, no one suspects that she may blab something. Another janitor, Zelda, works on her shift with her, who could be called Eliza's only friend, but the women's communication does not go beyond the lab. Giles dreams of getting his job back, but with the advent of color photographs, the artist's services become irrelevant. Nevertheless, the lonely old man spends a lot of time drawing illustrations that someone might like. Coming to work and at the end of the day, all female lab workers mark their time on a special card. This allows the management to monitor discipline, and Zelda has to constantly take a turn for a friend, because she is always late. The friends are invited to clean the main lab room, and they witness the arrival of a new specimen. Eliza approaches a huge glass sarcophagus filled with water, and sees an unknown creature start beating on the lid, trying to get out. After work, Giles takes his friend to the cafe they go to every week. The young bartender already recognizes his regulars and habitually serves lemon pie. But Eliza refuses to eat the dessert, as the girl would like to taste something else. The girls are cleaning the toilet room in the laboratory when the unpleasant Colonel Richard Strickland enters. The man talks smugly to the workers, relieves himself and leaves, but Eliza notices traces of blood on the tabletop after him. A few minutes later, Strickland walks out of the main hall with more serious injuries, and the lab begins to rush. Cleaners are sent to the lab to clean up after what happened, and Eliza finds the colonel's lost body parts under a cabinet. While the girl waits for help, she approaches the glass sarcophagus and sees a strange creature with gills and covered in scales in it. Eliza tells Giles about her discovery, but the man is sure that her friend is either confused or is making up this story about the sea monster from her loneliness. The old man takes his creation to a publishing house, but the former boss sends the drawing back for revision, promising to consider Giles a little later. Eliza sneaks into the main hall when no one is there, and treats the creature to boiled eggs, showing her friendliness. The sea monster is so intimidated by the workers that it doesn't risk getting close yet, but it does take the treat. Colonel Strickland takes over as security officer and begins checking on all employees. Inviting his cleaning lady friends for a chat, the man asks them strange questions, embarrassing the girls. Noticing the scars on Eliza's neck, Richard does not miss the opportunity to discuss this matter, but Zelda brings the conversation back to work. It turns out that Strickland summoned the staff to warn them of the danger in the main hall, as it was the creature from the sarcophagus that robbed him of his fingers. Eliza comes to the creature again, this time bringing a music player in addition to her treats. The monster watches with interest as the girl dances to the sound of the music, and this time he is much less afraid. Neither the cleaner or the sea creature notices that they are not alone, from a dark corner they are watched by one of the laboratory employees, Dr. Robert Hofstetler. The scientist immediately meets his Soviet colleagues, of whom he is a spy, and tells them that the object in the laboratory is able to make contact. From her comrades in the smoking room, Eliza learns about the blind spots in the parking lot, and remembers this information, knowing that it will come in handy. After waiting for everyone to disperse, the girl goes to her mysterious friend again, but this time she catches him chained on the platform. The creature suffers without water, but the girl has no time to do anything, as the laboratory staff and Colonel Strickland, who is so offended at the object for his fingers, enter the hall and begin to punish him from the threshold. The colonel tells the general that the ancient tribes of the Amazon worship the creature, but since they were quite primitive, one should not take their superstition seriously. Hofstetler wonders why there are traces of blood near the creature and asks that it be left alone and tested humanely, but both the colonel and the general only laugh at the doctor's strange affection. Discussing the matter with them, Robert sees Eliza hiding, but does not give the girl away. The general listens to the arguments of all the specialists and decides to consent to an autopsy of the creature for its detailed examination. This conversation is also heard by the mute janitor. On running home, the girl asks Giles to help her arrange an escape for the creature, but the old man doesn't want to hear anything about breaking the law. He leaves his friend to ponder her behavior, while he goes to town on business matters. The girl tries to convey to her friend that she saw herself in the monster, just as silent, and no one needs her. But even these words do not move her neighbor. Having redone the drawing as he was told, Giles runs to the newsroom confident that he will get the job. But the former boss hints to the old man that he will never come back to the publishing house, and his drawings are long out of date. To cheer himself up a bit, Giles goes to the cafe for a lemon pie. But the guy bartender treats him to another dessert, 
telling him to try new things once in a while. The old man takes the guy's words a little wrongly, and a misunderstanding occurs, after which the owner of the cafe asks the guest to leave. Having suffered several defeats at once during the day, Giles comes to his neighbor and agrees to help her in freeing her unusual friend. Hofstetler receives an injection from his Soviet colleagues. With it he must get rid of the object. The doctor's arguments that the creature is not dangerous, it has a mind and worthy of living. But doctor's words do not stop anyone. The colonel buys himself a new Cadillac, encouraged by his victories over the monster. The sentence is about to be carried out, and Strickland can finally get his revenge on his fingers. During the working day Eliza prepares at work everything they will need for the escape, and at the same time Giles prepares the van in which they will drive the ichthyander out of the laboratory. Dar. Hofstetler is keeping a close eye on the mute cleaning lady the whole time, suspecting that she is up to something. At the end of the working day, Zelda notices that her friend is not at the exit, and suspecting that she is involved in some kind of story, her friend punches her ticket so that there are no questions to the girl. Eliza, meanwhile, bumps into Diar. Hofstetler, who helps the girl carry out her plan. While hiding the creature in a cart of wet rags, he incidentally tells the girl all the information she needs to know to keep the sea monster in her apartment. The colonel realizes at one point what is going on, but he doesn't have time to notice and find out who was involved in the object's escape. The only thing he sees is his brand, new, wrecked Cadillac, which is out in the big world for the first time. Eliza and Giles bring the creature to the girl's apartment and submerge it in a tub of salt water. The monster immediately gets better, and the rescuers can finally exhale. Leaning against the sink, the old man pulls the wig off his head, laughing at what he has done in his old age. In the morning, the girl arrives at work as if nothing had happened, and she and Zelda manage to pretend that they are not aware of what happened at all. Giles stays with the creature, making sketches in his notebook, but the man falls asleep and misses the moment when the monster wants lunch and there is no one but the cat at hand. Raising his voice a little, the old man scares the creature and gets a couple of scratches from it. Eliza returns from work to help her old friend first, and then brings the creature home, and it puts its hand on the old man's head and apologizes to him for what has happened. Eliza helps the ichthyander climb back into the tub of salt water, as he is getting worse. The creature runs its rough hand over the girl's neck, which scares her a little, but a few minutes later Eliza returns to her friend, throwing off her robe. The next day, the girl excitedly tells Zelda about what happened with the sea monster. After waiting until the end of the day, Eliza heads straight for the creature. Tucking a slit under the door with a towel, the girl turns on all the water taps and dials up a full room, finding herself with the strange lover completely in its midst. The owner of the cinema located on the first floor wakes Giles up by knocking on the girl's door, as she has flooded the entire house. The old man promises to sort it out, and goes to the mirror to clean himself up and finds that his hair has appeared on his head and the scratches on his arm are completely gone. He runs to his neighbor to tell her about it and find out why the flood happened, and when he opens the door, a wonderful picture appears before his eyes, a happy, wet Eliza standing in the arms of the sea monster. Embracing the creature, the girl sees that he is beginning to lose his scales, and sadly realizes that soon they will have to part, as he needs to be at sea to survive. The colonel continues to follow Hofstetler, and learns his secret. The man is convinced that it was the Soviets who took the subject in order to do their experiments on him. Looking at his failing fingers, Strickland wants to destroy the monster at all costs. Eliza invites Zelda in, and after examining the creature, she confirms that it must be put out to sea immediately. She goes home to warn her husband of her absence, when she is visited by the colonel, who, through heavy persuasion, has learned from the doctor who is really involved in the abduction. The cleaning lady warns her friend that they should hurry, and Eliza, along with Giles, loads the ichthyander into the car and drives it to the wharf. But the colonel proves to be nimble. He arrives at the same place and does not let the girl set the monster free, at the same time deciding to get rid of her as well. Eliza stands next to her lover, and takes his hand in hers and closes her eyes. Moments later, the ichthyander regains consciousness and the bullet wounds on him heal. He easily gets rid of the colonel, and takes his beloved in his arms and jumps into the water with her. Giles and Zelda stand under an umbrella and say goodbye to their friend, not knowing what will happen to her in an alien world. Once under the water, Eliza opens her eyes. Her wounds heal and the scars on her neck turn to gills. At last, the girl finds herself in a place where she won't be alone and truly happy. Thanks for watching. Write in the comments below your thoughts about this movie. And please don't forget to support us by liking and subscribing.